Hey art nerds, so not too long ago I ran a stream on how I mix skin tones. This is the time lapse tutorial resulting from that. It's been time lapse by about 2x. If you're interested in checking out the original live stream which has loads of interesting watercolor questions, uh, you can check that out by clicking the link down in the description below. I'm also going to list the materials that I use in this tutorial in the description as well. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to mix nine different skin tones referenced off of Human A. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. And I really wanted to try and avoid mixing just Caucasian skin tones since I do that a lot on this channel when showing you guys Kara related stuff. So I tried to mix, I tried to pick a pretty good diverse representation of the human skin tone color palette. And I hope you guys will use this as a starting point and inspiration. I'm a watercolor comic artist. So my goal is not 100% perfect uh, representation in terms of color mixing and shadow, but rather a caricature of color and shadow. So I hope this is useful for you guys and there are loads of other great color mixing tutorials here on YouTube that you can check out if you're looking for something that's a bit more in depth. Between classes and my comic 7 inch Kara, I do a lot of color mixing. I also really enjoy painting from reference when I have a chance. Even if you have a really cartoony style like I do, painting from reference really helps build up your skill set and your repertoire. So here are a few examples of different skin tones and different applications in which I need to mix skin tones just to show you guys what my background is. Again, I mostly do watercolor comics and a lot of watercolor illustration. So when I am looking at people, when I'm painting people, for the most part, it's for this sort of very stylized, cartoony illustration. If you guys like my art, if you're interested in seeing more of it, most of these characters are from the comic 7-inch Kara. You can read the first six chapters for free at 7inchkara.com. You can also join us on Kickstarter by clicking the link down below. You can also check out my art at instagram.com slash natosoup. So in the live stream, before we dived into the main meat of this tutorial, I wanted to demonstrate how to mix mm -hmm. skin tones with a few popular color sets. So we have the Core Mini Palette, we have the Da Vinci Artist Color Mixing Set, and we have the Daniel Smith Palette. You guys can see that in the full live stream in the link below. However, for this tutorial, we're going to be using my very dirty Daily Driver Palette. These are the colors that I find useful when I'm mixing skin tones. Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna, Venetian Red, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, Naphthamide Maroon, Van Dyke Brown, Sepia, Yellow Ochre, Scarlet, and Quinn Burnt Sienna. And these are from a variety of different brands that I like and have reviewed over the years. And this is where those colors are in my palette. I have, I try to have my palette arranged in a way that makes sense to me chromatically. And then here is my very dirty color map for this palette to show you guys what those colors look like in swatches. And I have them underlined here so you guys can find them. The colors that are underlined in purple are typically used for shadow colors or for painting the shadows on the face when I'm painting in my cartoony style. So the reference we're gonna be using today is Human A. It's by Angelica Das. It was like a thesis or a master's project, I believe, where she photographed thousands of different people. And I selected nine different people, nine different subjects, so that I could color pick and color reference for their skin tone. So these are the people that I selected. Now, I'm not trying to paint these specific people. I'm referencing their skin tones. I'm referencing the tones of their face and I'm referencing the colors of the shadows on their faces. So it's loose reference for color, not necessarily reference for the faces themselves. And you can see me in the reflection there, so I'm smiling back at you guys. 
I'll have links to Humane down in the description below. Today I'm painting on Canton XL watercolor paper. This is a very inexpensive cellulose paper that's sold just about anywhere. And I have a cute face template. I'll link that in the description below. Art nerds, of course, get it for free. You can join me on Patreon and help support the work I do here on this channel by joining me at patreon.com slash natosoup. Even a dollar a month goes a long way and gets you early access to my videos, including this one. Um, so you can get the template for free if you're an art nerd, art nerd, or you can buy it on Gumroad using the links below. I printed it out onto my Canton XL paper using my blue line technique, and I penciled the faces, changing the features just a bit to make it look less like copy pasta of the same face over and over again, which was the original art since I was demonstrating different hairstyles, and more like a class full of kiddos. So to begin, I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to their eyes using ultramarine blue, doing it in two layers. This actually reactivated the blue line dye that I used. So the eye color is a little bit different than it normally would be. Normally I would stretch this sort of illustration which would reactivate those blues and remove them from the paper. But since this is, was for a more impromptu project and I really needed that desk space, I opted not to stretch my watercolor paper in this instance. So sort of a basic rule of thumb, when I'm painting darker skin tones like the little lady here at the very beginning, I begin by applying an underpainting of blush and shadow color first. Then I begin developing the skin tones, go in and add more blush and more shadow color, and then add my final details. And these guys are gonna look a little bit weird because we only handled the skin tones in this tutorial. In a follow-up tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how I handle painting the hair, and that's gonna give us a much more finished illustration. So once, oh, so I'm also using this sub sheet. So this is the original printable. It was printed on Canson's bulk 90 pound watercolor paper using my toner printer. And I'm painting this to show you guys where the different shadows might fall on the face. So if you were to paint just one layer of skin tone, how I would recommend handling it. So you can see for the blush color, I've applied it to the cheeks, the tops of the eyes, under the nose, the lips, and underneath the jawline. Now I'm going in with the shadow color. This is a mix of dioxine purple and naphthamide maroon, so it gives us a really nice dark reddish purple. And I'm applying that to the shadows on the face. Next, for this style of illustration, I apply an all-over base color. The base color for her skin tone is burnt sienna, Venetian red, burnt umber, and a little bit of alizarin crimson to add some warmth. And you guys might notice I'm swatching as I go. This allows me to make sure that my colors are the colors I actually want before I apply them to the piece of paper. It also allows me to check and make sure that the colors layer the way I want them to layer. So for this next face, it's a lighter skin tone. So we're going to wait to apply the shadow colors and the blush colors. And this is a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna. 
So this gives us kind of a more yellow inspired, yellow influenced skin tone. Since skin tones have various undertones to them, you can have reddish undertones or bluish undertones. Even some people have sort of greenish undertones to their skin. And it's important to kind of keep that in mind when you're mixing and matching these colors. So I'm going to have scans both of the full watercolor faces as well as the smaller faces where the shadows are kind of marked in. And I'm going to have that over at natosoup.blogspot.com in a blog post that will also contain this tutorial as well as other useful tutorials. If you're interested in learning more about watercolor for comics and for illustration, I have a few wonderful series here on this channel. I have my quick and easy watercolor. This is designed to get you painting as fast as possible. It teaches you some common, popular, very basic watercolor techniques, as well as a few tutorials that utilize those techniques to help those techniques kind of really start to click in your brain. Then we have my watercolor basic series. This is focused really on watercolor for comics comics, which is my bread and butter and my main passion. And then we have the catch all watercolor series. And if you're more of a reader than you are a watcher, my blog natosoup.blogspot.com has the watercolor basic series over there as well in written form. And they're meant to augment, not replace one another. So for these faces, in order to conserve time, what I'm doing is I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm working in batch. And as one area area dries, I start working on another. Since this was done on a live stream, being time sensitive and conserving time was really important. As it is, that live stream still took about three hours and I only got through four of the faces. Of course, when I was no longer answering a million questions about watercolor, I was able to zoom through the remaining five faces in the rest of that evening. So you can see with our first face, our first little girl, I added a second layer to her and this is the same color. And um, you can see that with watercolor, you can apply glazes, you can apply layers and build up that color, build up that tone. For the second face, same thing. Uh, I don't think I mixed it any more saturated than it is and I'm just applying a second layer to help better define the shadows and the planes on the face by building up local color contrast. And it was pointed out to me during the stream that different artists handle their watercolors differently than I do. This is always a your mileage may vary situation and I always encourage artists to find the methods that work best for them. And sometimes that means watching people who have an art style similar to what you want your future art style to look like. So again, I'm just applying a secondary layer of the same color. For this girl's face, her main color mixture is yellow ochre with a little bit of Quinn Burnt Sienna. And I'm not brand specific, so the brands in my daily driver are a wide mix. We have Windsor Newton, we have Daniel Smith, we have Holbein, we have Magello, we have some Turner colors in there. We have Sennelier, we have Core. So it's kind of just whatever colors I happen to really not like. So for this young guy, I'm basing him off of the gentleman who had really dark skin. I wanted to practice painting darker skin tones. So as with the first little girl, I started by painting um, the shadow colors. Actually with her, I started with the blush, but with him, I started with the shadow colors and this is going to help really create a base for the face. So the reason that I start when it comes to darker skin tones, I start with the shadow colors and the blush colors has everything to do with how colors glaze and layer in watercolor. So typically earth tone pigments tend to be a little bit more opaque and they don't take layering and they don't take glazing as well as more transparent, less sedimenting pigments might. So I found it beneficial if I don't want my colors to lift up, if I don't want them to get muddy, to apply my really light thin glazes like I would with blush colors or like I would with shadow colors to apply those first and those tone the face and then I can apply the local color, the natural color. So next I'm applying the blush tone to his face and then I switch over to our little shadow map just to show you guys where all the shadows are going to fall in the face. 
So my goal with this was really to create kind of a cheat sheet for myself and for others. Let's say you're only going to apply one layer of watercolor. Maybe you're doing watercolor sketching. So how do we best utilize the white of the paper for highlights and our one color to provide form and contrast? And while some of those colors are a little bit difficult to see because they are so light in a single layer, I think it worked out quite well. So my swatches don't just stop at mixing the color. I also swatch when I'm layering colors, particularly skin tones, to make sure they work well together. I've mixed her skin tone a little bit darker. I've probably added more of the burnt umber and more of the burnt sienna, maybe a little more lizarding crimson, and I've probably started to add a little bit of Van Dyke brown, which is a really nice dark warm brown, just to start rendering the shadows on her face. Now some faces are going to take more layers than others and this is a situation where practice really does make perfect. So for the girl next to her whose skin tone base is yellow ochre and burnt sienna, so it's a warmer skin tone base, I'm using a little bit of alizarin crimson which is a cool red to apply the blush to her lips, her cheeks, above her eyelids, under her neck, and on the insides of her ears. So something I think is an important tech takeaway regardless of who you're painting or how you mix your colors is to reference, have a reference color tone handy, even if it means Googling or using human A as an important reference so that you can color match and you can mix skin tones that feel like they belong to real living humans, but also to swatch, swatch, swatch and color check to make sure your colors are staying consistent and staying true and continue to look like what you want them to look. There's been so many times where I was painting a skin tone different from my own and I may have applied another layer and it was just, it was too dark or it was too light or it was too warm or it was too cool for the area and it just kind of really messed up and I had to clean it up and repaint it. So I really recommend you swatch and you keep track of your swatches and you layer your swatches so that you can more accurately paint without as many mistakes. And practice as always makes perfect. So if you would like, I really highly encourage you to print out this little nine grid of faces and practice along at home. So for our third little girl in the top row, I'm using Quinn Burnt Sienna as the blush color. So Quinn Burnt, well, Quinn Burnt Sienna is a Turner color and it is a really, really saturated Burnt Sienna that makes for a really nice skin tone as well as a really nice blush tone. It's all about the saturation that you're working in. So for our little guy on the second row, the colors I use to mix up his skin tone are Van Dyke Brown, Sepia, a little bit of burnt or some burnt umber, Naphthamide Maroon, and then a little bit of Alizarin Crimson.
So going back and forth between the different faces as they dry, rather than waiting for a face to completely dry before I add more details, allows me to make better use of my time. During the stream, I also used a hair dryer to help dry things out a little bit more quickly. I've stated many times I don't really like using hair dryers to dry my watercolor. I feel like they cause a lot of problems. So please don't take me using one to speed up the watercolor process for a stream as indicative of me endorsing the use of it. All right, so for our little guy on the second row, my chat complained that he looked a little bit like a zombie. And the reason for that is because the purple shadow color we painted desaturated the first layer of brown. Now, you may notice this in your own paintings. That's actually pretty common. It's not something to be worried about. The solution is to continue to glaze your skin tones on top of it because it's going to kind of resaturate that color. So don't let that scare you. Now, a problem that happened with the young lady on the top row with the darker skin tone is I went to glaze some blush and some red onto her lips and cheeks. And Canson XL, being a cheap cellulose paper, is very prone to lifting. So that's something I want you guys to keep in mind. I'm using it because it's economical and affordable, not because it's the best. Um, and it lifted up some of the skin tone from her lips. So this is, again, not an uncommon problem when you're working on cellulose papers. So I just allowed it to dry, mixed my alizarin crimson darker, reapplied the skin tone, and then applied the alizarin crimson once that had a chance to fully dry. So watercolor is so much about just being patient, both with yourself and with the art. So be patient with yourself, be patient with the art, and practice. Um, I've talked about the ugly phase on the blog. I've talked about it in a few different videos. The ugly phase is when you hit a point in your painting where your brain is fatigued, you're tired of looking at it, you're tired of working on it, and it's just not looking good. It's not quite finished. And it's really important to push through that ugly phase, even if you can't salvage the piece because you're gonna learn so much about how to salvage a piece if you stick with it and you push through the ugly phase. And two many novice artists, people who are new to art, people who are newer to different art forms give up at the ugly phase because they don't have that guidance telling them to keep pushing. So for our little guy on the second row, I've mixed his skin tone even darker. So more Van Dyke Brown, more sepia, maybe more naphthamide maroon. It all depends on what the swatches are telling us and what our reference is telling us. And I applied another layer to start giving contour and better shadow to his face. And watercolor is all about personal taste and discretion. You can choose to stop adding layers at any point where you feel it's enough. It's all about what your eye is telling you is right and what your reference is telling you is right. So for me, and I don't know if I've ever said this in a video, but I sure have thought it. For me, this stage where I have the skin tones all down, but the eyes might not be colored or the hair might not be colored, it's a hard stage for me because it looks just so unfinished. And the reason for that is the contrast isn't there. Often when we color the hair, when we color the eyes, it adds that additional contrast. And then we can go in with our dry over dry details. So for this young lady, I mixed a bit of mauve or mauve as some people say, a little bit of naphthamide maroon and maybe a little bit of dioxine purple. Now, I'm not super hot on the shadows on her face. They were a little bit too cool and a little bit too dark. For the girl next to her, that's much more mauve with maybe a little bit of naphthamide maroon. When you're painting shadows on the face, if you're painting directly from reference and you're doing a realistic portrait, you are going to notice that there's some Payne's Gray, there's some bluer areas, there's some much cooler shadow areas. But if you're working in a cartoony style, you may opt not to use those cooler blues those grays because they desaturate too much and they deter too much from the overall 
overall feel of the piece. So for me, I really like working with mauves. I like working with maroons. I like working with cooler reds. I like working with red violet. And I like working with dioxine purple, depending on the skin tone, in order to mix up my shadow colors. And if you guys are curious, if you would like a tutorial all about deciding on and painting shadow colors for skin tones, let me know down in the comments below. It's definitely something I'm willing to do for you guys. I just want to make sure the interest is there. So for the young lady with the pom-poms, next to our young gentleman in the second row, we're going to apply the blush and then the shadow color first, and then we're going to start applying her skin tone. So I'm still using mostly alizarin crimson for the blush tone in the cheeks. You don't have to, you're really welcome to font, use any color you think works well. I just happen to really like alizarin crimson. So for her skin tone, we're using Burnt Sienna mixed with Venetian Red with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and a little bit of Sepia added. And for the shadow color on her skin, I'm not going as dark a shadow color as I did with some of the other kids. It's mostly going to be mauve, which I think really suits the lighter skin tone that she has. So again, a lot of it is analyzing your reference, making swatches, and thinking really carefully about the colors that you want to use. Now I promise, the more you do this, the easier it's going to get, the more intuitive it's going to get. So it's not always an uphill battle. So here's our little shadow reference chart. And I think this turned out really cute. I'm going to hold on to this because I find that I often over paint and over layer my watercolors. And sometimes it's nice to do lighter watercolor sketches. And this is a really helpful reference for me in that regard. So now the shadow color and the blush has had a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint in the overall skin tone color. Now with really light skin tones, you can use the white of the paper as a highlight. With darker skin tones though, you're kind of fighting the white of the paper. You may want to leave some of the white, but in order to build up that skin tone, to build up that color, you really need to start with a toning layer. In some of my alcohol marker videos, I talk about using tone tan paper as a base for different skin tones and how it makes it so much easier. Because then later on, if you need to add lighter highlights, you can just use some white gouache or you can use some white color pencil or you can use even like a peach color pencil to add those lighter highlights. So for the girl next to her, we are going to use just a really light wash of Quinn Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna and Quinn Burnt Sienna work almost straight out of the half pan, straight out of the tube as good skin tones. And really it's just about adjusting the saturation. And now that her uh, face has had a chance to dry, I can go in and start adding some of the shadows, adding some of the contours, and creating a little bit of contrast. Now, in my quick and easy watercolor series, I, I have a mini series called Lighting and Contrast, and it's all about figuring out how to use local color. That is like the native color of whatever you're painting, minus like light adding some color or shadow adding some color. But I have a whole series on painting lighting and contrast. If you're new to this, if this is something you're kind of struggling with, sometimes it's really helpful to go way back to the basics and kind of relearn things. In fact, creating those videos has been really helpful for me because it helps me practice my fundamentals. But not only do I show you how to light a cube, a cone, a sphere, I show you how to light a house exterior, a house interior, and I show you how to render faces, how to render the planes of the face. And it's a very basic tutorial. I'd love to go back and do a skin painting tutorial or rather a facial lighting tutorial using different light sources. But if you're kind of struggling with where the shadows fall on a basic face, that could be a good series to revisit. So I'll link that down in the description below. 
Also, in terms of how color layers and color handles, alcohol markers and watercolors have a lot in common. So I have some really good tutorials on rendering faces and rendering skin tones as part of my Copic Markers playlist. So I'll link those down in the description below as well. So we mixed our Quinn Burnt Sienna a little bit darker and I think Quinn Burnt Sienna might be a Turner exclusive color. Uh, the tube I have is from Turner, but if I'm wrong, I'm sure you guys will let me know. And I picked it up at Jerry's Artorama, but it's really a very helpful uh, color. It's got a lot of good use to it. Not just in skin tones, I just happen to like the color a lot and I use it often when I'm painting 7 inch Kara. So this next kiddo is a mix of yellow ochre with a little bit of scarlet. And this is a color combo I use very often. It's kind of my default color combo for painting Caucasian skin tones. Although the lady in the reference that I'm using for her is Asian. Um, so for that, you would just add perhaps a little bit more yellow ochre. It really depends on who you're referencing. The lady in the reference had kind of a darker base to her skin tone, so I used more yellow ochre than I normally would, but that's where swatching and checking really come in handy. Now for the Quinn Burnt Sienna Girl, I am using alizarin crimson for the blush and for her cheeks because the girl, the lady in the reference had kind of a cool cast to her lips. Like her lips were red, but they were more of a cooler red and the blush on her cheeks was more of a cooler sort of color. So again, that's where using your reference is really important because if it had been me going from imagination, I would have gone with a very watered down scarlet. So I, um, a warmer red or I would have just used the Quinn Burnt Sienna the way I did for the girl directly above her whose skin is a mix of yellow ochre and Quinn Burnt Sienna. And then for the shadows on her face it's a lot of mauve with a little bit of dioxine purple and a little bit of naphthamide maroon. So the stream ended before I started the girl with the cute pom-pom pigtails on the second row. Um, and I really just wanted to finish this tutorial in the evening. Um, you know, I was about halfway done and I knew since I wasn't streaming and I wasn't answering questions, I could get it done a lot faster because I could focus more and I wasn't going to be constantly turning off and on the secondary camera. So while the girl on the third row dries, we're going to start mixing up the skin tone for the girl right next to her. And this is the only Caucasian person I painted in the whole batch. Um, and she has really very different skin complexion from me. I think, I think one of the crutches that I use is that I will reference my own skin tone when I'm painting people rather than looking up reference enough. So you know, there's a lot of skin variation from person to person and just referencing my own or just referencing my partners, it doesn't really cover the bases well enough. It's actually very uh, myopic and very short-sighted of me. So for this person, her skin, oh, 
Her skin is a mix of burnt sienna and Venetian red, very similar to what I'm going to use for the little boy next to her. But you can really see how just changing your proportions will change how the color looks. So going back to the little girl on the third row, the first one, I used a little bit of scarlet red for her lips and for her cheeks and above her eyes to add that blush to her skin. And then I leaned a little bit more heavily with the naphthamide maroon for adding the shadow tone to her skin. So it's like mauve with more naphthamide maroon in it. And the reference woman for the girl in the middle bottom, she's, her skin is so pale and it has kind of a blue cast to it that I really wanted to leave the layers that I painted on her very light. And then for the boy next to her, we have a mix of burnt sienna and Venetian red, same as the very, very pale skinned girl next to him, but in much greater proportion. So we get a really warm, rich sort of skin tone. Now this is one where I probably would have benefited from doing the blush and the shadow color first, because I try to layer them on afterwards and I ended up having a lot of problems with the shadow color kind of bleeding out into the rest of the paint, even though the paint had dried. And this is something that I've noticed, particularly with Venetian red, but other um, earth tones like yellow ochre or the umbers, if they're painted in too thick a saturation, it's almost like they become a watercolor ground and color can kind of spider out into them and it becomes more difficult to control. So that's another reason why I usually recommend doing those lighter glazes, those lighter washes, those really wet glaze applications as an underpainting and then working with thicker mixes later since those are less prone to spider out. So for the girl next to him, I'm using a little bit of scarlet red to add blush to her cheeks, her lips, under her nose, and the tops of her eyes. And then for the shadow color, as I mentioned, she has kind of a bluish cast to her skin. The shadows on her skin are more blue. So I decided to go with more dioxine purple than I normally would for someone who's as pale as she is. So now I'm applying a second layer of the Burnt Sienna and Venetian Red to the little guy on the bottom row. And I am trying to leave a lot of that initial color still viewable. So in the stream, someone pointed out that you may want to work wet into wet when you're painting faces in order to avoid harsh shadows. What you can also do is you can paint wet over dry and then use a clean watercolor brush to just kind of blur and soften that line. But I wanted some of those harsher transitions because I felt like it would really reflect well. Um, given the style that I'm painting in. Since it's a more cartoony style, it kind of has a shell shaded, shell, wow, cell shaded aesthetic. Don't know why that's so hard to say, but a cell shaded aesthetic. And um, I also know the limitations of Canton XL watercolor paper. I know colors can start to lift. So I wanted to do several thinner mix layers and then add thicker mixes in detail rather than trying to get it down to only a couple of layers but there's a lot of blending and a lot of wet into wet going on there and again it's a your mileage may vary sort of situation how you handle your watercolors will also depend on your paper if i was using a cotton rag paper I might take the wet into wet approach, or if I was painting even larger, I might take the wet into wet approach. Um, I was having a lot of dry issues with the Canton paper the night I was painting this in that, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but some of the faces would take a really long time to dry, and then some of the faces would dry so quick they were starting to get streaky. So it's really just about adjusting how you handle your materials to suit the environment, to suit the paper, and to suit the materials themselves. 
So for our little dude here at the end, I used a Lizarin Crimson on his cheeks and on his lips underneath his neck and on the interior of his ears. And then I mixed some Burnt Umber and a little bit of Van Dyke Brown to start painting in the shadows. I also used the Dioxine Purple with a little bit of Naphthamide Maroon to paint the skin shadows as well. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. We have the more detailed rendered uh, style compared to the more simple just the color and then the white of the paper style so that is nine different skin tones nine different kids this young lady was burnt sienna venetian red with a little bit of alizarin crimson mixed in for the base skin tone this young lady was yellow ochre and burnt sienna for the base skin tone This young lady was yellow ochre with a little bit of Quinn Burnt Sienna to add some warmth to her skin tone. This young gentleman was Van Dyke Brown, Sepia, Naphthamide Maroon, and Burnt Umber with a little bit of Alizarin Crimson mixed in. This young lady was Burnt Sienna, Venetian Red with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown and a little bit of Sepia mixed in. This young lady was Quinn Burnt Sienna with a lot of water. This young lady was Yellow Ochre with a little bit of Scarlet mixed in. This young lady was Burnt Sienna and Venetian Red but a whole lot of water. And then this young gentleman was burnt sienna and venetian red mixed in far greater proportions than the girl before him so really the ratios that you mix your paint that you add your colors can really change how your colors mix and how your skin tones come across so i want to thank you guys so much for joining me for this tutorial i hope you guys found it helpful useful and informative if you enjoyed it and you'd like to support the work that i do you can always send me a tip and coffee ko-fi.com slash natto soup for a one-time tip or you can join me on patreon at patreon.com slash natto soup if you guys have any questions let me know down in the comments below and i hope you guys have a wonderful day bye guys